Well, you be ready to be taught the word of the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And just believe that whatever it is that you are expecting. Say, I, I want to say something. Your posture says everything about your expectancy. When you, when you go in, you, you know, when I, I played a little ball when I was in school. And, you know, if you, if you played baseball and, you know, somebody was hitting the ball to you or throwing the ball, you, your posture was ready at all times to catch the ball, right? Amen. Because if it wasn't, you, you might get hit. So I want you to, your posture to be this morning, that of one to receive, to catch by the revelation of God's word. See, I, I, I want, you got to understand something. You, you can hear a message, you know, you, you know, that is preached over and over and over. But man, something happens when revelation comes. And what happens is transformation and change in your life takes place. And I believe with all my heart this morning, if you'll position yourself and get your mind in expectancy in an agreement with what God's going to say here today, I believe that you can walk out of here victoriously as an overcomer that God says that you already are and receive what God has for you this day. Somebody say amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Father, for that fresh fire, God, here today. Lord, falling upon us here today. We pray, God, that everything that is not like you in our lives, that it would be burnt away, Father God. Lord, I pray that there will be a stirring here among your people, God. Lord, God, to press in like we've never pressed in before, Lord. God, with an expectancy, to see God. Lord, that signs, wonders, and miracles will take place in this church, in this city city, in this county, in this state of Alabama, Father. Lord, we thank you for moving upon us, oh God. And we believe, God, that you are moving and that you will revive us and bring revival to the state of Alabama, Lord. And we thank you for it, Father. We thank you for moving in our midst here today. God, I thank you for giving me the words, Father, of wisdom, the words of knowledge and the words of understanding, Father. Lord, that would touch every heart, that would Touch every individual in this place today, God, and give them the answers that they need in this life, Father. And we praise you for it. And everyone said, amen, amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. I want to talk to you about a message I've never really ministered on. Uh, and all, and it's called Weapons of Mass Destruction. Actually, you could call it Weapons of Mass Distractions. I've never seen a time in my 58 years, amen, society as a whole as we are distracted as you and I are in this world why is that God showed me he said it's a weapon of mass destruction can I tell you the very things this this iPad this this iPhone some call it a smartphone and all these very things that God has given you and I to reach the world, to reach the lost, to reach the hurting, to reach the people of God. Listen to me. They have become a weapon of mass destruction. You might say, well, you sound like one of them clothesline preachers. You know, preaching about, you know what you wear. <laughs> Well, the Bible does say, you know, we're to dress modest. And while we on the subject, it's amazing to me. I mean, some things that people wear, I mean, you could sew the outfit from the cotton out of Asper bottle. <laughs> well, I reckon he's just one of them old-fashioned Pentecostal preachers. Somebody said amen. Some things don't change. See, sometimes, you know, the message is not to bring... Con the message is to remind us who we are. Somebody say amen. amen. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 says, 
If you then be risen with Christ. He said to seek those things which are above. If you look the word seek up in its original language, the Greek that it was written from, it means to crave. How many of you, there are certain few foods that you just crave? I, I know that some love Mexican food and, 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 and some love Chinese food. And I, I, I you, you know, I, I love Southern food. Now, it's not time to, to dismiss, so get that off your mind right now. <laughs> but, I mean, you, 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 can, you, you think about it, and you, 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 you know, my, your mouth waters. You just begin to, you think, you begin to crave it. You begin to desire it. And that's what God is saying here. Now that you that are risen above, those that have been raised up with Christ, he said, this is what I want you to begin to do. I want you to begin to strive after. I want you to begin to crave. I mean, you know how it was, I mean, when you, when you first saw her. You was already plotting. Come on. Ladies, you too. I, I said, I can always tell when a woman, you know, you, you know, when she, she, she has, a, you know, went through a divorce or broken up with a boyfriend, you know. And the same thing goes with men. I mean, they'll start dressing different. <laughs> Get her extra day in at the salon. Probably going to color that hair. Puff up this and puff up that. Deflate this, deflate that. And me and I mean, we go, you know, we go get a membership at the gym. I've seen it, you know, some men, they start, you, you, you know, they get the gold chain and got the shirt, you know. Somebody say, stay focused. <laughs> See, this is what this, really, this message is really about. Because there's too many things in this life. See, you've you got to understand something. The devil comes in all forms of disguise. Are you with me? Now notice this. He said, seek those things which are above. We're Christ seated. On the right hand of God, is that not what it says? Now look at this. Now watch this. He said, to set your mind. The King James actually says to set your affections. Which means your mind. It means your thoughts. It means your focus. To set. I run a little bit of track in in high school, and, and uh, you, you know, they they call you up to the, to the line. They said, uh, on your mark, get set. He said, set, which actually means to position. You've got to position yourself. You've got to place yourself. You've got to put yourself. You've got to place your thoughts there. Or you, you position your thoughts there. Because if you, listen to me, I, I know some folks that can't watch the news. Because it brings fear on them. I, I used to have a lady in church, I'd say, you know, I said, and she said, Pastor, what do I do? I said, stop it. Why is that? Because it's a distraction. See, our eyes are gateways to our soul. Come on. We're made up of three parts. Pastors taught us this. We're first a spiritual being that possesses a soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions that live in a physical body. But God says, I want to remind you that you've been risen. 
that you are a spiritual being. And listen to me, church, if there was ever a time that we needed to focus on who we are in Christ Jesus, it's this hour and time that we live in now. Why? Because like John 10, 10 says, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill and destroy. And I'm going to say this probably repetitively, but how many missed opportunities have we missed because we were distracted? Even in the church. Distracted. How many times have you went to seek God? And the phone beeped. The phone rung. Stay focused. This thing is that God has become a God to many people. Come on, I'm going to preach to myself this morning. Listen, can I tell you, you know what what idol worship is? It, out of work, idolatry is anything that you put a more value above God. If, if, if you will, take, take, to, take those just a few pictures. I got just the, the few that I want to show you. Something different, a little different this morning. I want you to look at this. Do you mind if I strap my phone to my forehead so I can pretend you're looking at me when we talk? I mean, we, we laugh, but it's reality, isn't it? Come on, give me the next slide. Old man is 3 o'clock in the morning. I should really get off the computer and go to bed. And here's an hour later, we're laying in bed with our phones in our head. Hand. Go to the next one. Look at this. This. I'm telling you, this message with me right here. This picture right here. When Caleb was playing uh, 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 football, and all this is just last year's school, graduation. Say hallelujah, Pastor. (laughs) I'm graduating too. (laughs) Boy, another another life's lesson. (laughs) And and you know, and I'm not finished because I got a six-year-old coming up. <laughs> I made it through four. <laughs> One more. But when his mom and I would go to his football games, and I would see, I would see parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, and I sat there. Touchdown! What, what? What was that? What happened? What happened? What? 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 what I missed what? It's true. It's true. Go to the next slide. Look at this. Most of the new arrivals seem incapable of conversation. They just stare at their hands in despair. Go to the next. This is, look at this. Isn't it great to have some quality time with the family? Come on. I've been guilty. One of us with the iPad and one of us with the phone. I'm telling you. I had, I had to deal with this before I preached it because it was me. Somebody say, stay focused. Stay focused. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. It's, time it's time to delete the distractions. The distractions. Yeah. Yes. Put up Isaiah 50, verse 7. You know, I, I, I like to study, you know, about leadership especially. And there's one thing that I, that, that I noticed in all great leaders. They had one common denominator that they all had in common. And it's that they stayed focused. See, their goals were very focused. 
They are resilient. They're, they are determined. They, they are driven. Why? Because they're focused. They wouldn't allow anything to deter them. And they become a great leader. They become very successful. And I want to just remind you where he said to set your mind. Now, I, I like this because I really didn't understand it until I started studying out the word set. Because it means you have a responsibility. Is you have to position. You have to lay up. You have to place your thoughts there. Because you remember there's a thief that's coming, listen, to come, to kill, steal, and destroy. Remember I said that. I remember when I was a little boy, I mean, you know, we, we didn't have any of this. <laughs> Better had electricity. <laughs> you wanted to cool off, go get in front of the window. <laughs> Catch a breeze. You want to come in the house? You don't get a drink of water? Mom said, I, you drink out the water hose. <laughs> you ain't tracking up my clean floor. <laughs> come on, some, some of you my age and older realize what I'm talking about. <laughs> but you know when we, I'm going to tell you one of my pet peeves, whatever that is, I don't even know where it comes from. One of the things that bother me is when we have, have our phones at the table eating. What happened to quality time with family? Well, I remember when I was a little kid, I mean, you know, you, you, you didn't have all this stuff, these distractions. Weapons of mass distractions. Weapons of mass destructions. Now, my wife will tell you, I, I despise text, and I will, but I, I don't like it. She's got a doctor's degree in it. <laughs> Master's, I mean. So. Her and her mom. This, I'm like, Amber. Why don't you just call her? Y'all been testing it all. Or you, can, you can say what you want to in five minutes. Is my scripture up there? Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah 15, 7 says, For the Lord God will help me. Say, the Lord will help me. Lord now, this is really speaking about a prophecy of Jesus. Now, watch this. He said, Therefore shall I not be confounded. In other words, I'm not going to be discouraged. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know I shall not be ashamed. I have set, there, there, there's that word again. I have positioned myself. I have placed myself like flint. I remember reading in the book of Luke in chapter 9 there, verse 51, and it says, And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, speaking of Jesus. Listen to me. Jesus knew what was going to take place. He knew the pain. He knew that he would be wounded. He knew that he would suffer greatly like no man ever. He knew the emotional agony that would take place. He knew this. He knew that his clients, us, would reject him. He knew that he would be spit upon. He knew that he would be beaten with stripes above measure. He knew all this. But the Bible says, and it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set, there it is again. 
his face towards Jerusalem. No matter the pain, no matter the suffering, no matter what rose up in Jesus' life, he was focused, and this is amazing to me because the Bible said his face was set like flint. He was focused on the joy set before him. The rewards that would take place. Don't miss opportunities with God. I told my wife, uh, I told her, I said, you you know, there there are certain days I just get to be at the house all day long by myself. And I I love and I treasure those times. And and I was was praying and praying and praying and studying and reading the word of God this this past week. and, And I told her, I said, you know, there's not anything that can replace time alone with God. Just can't do it. I hope and pray that you'll get more than what you're just getting today. Feed your spirit. We feed our bodies, don't we? I mean, yeah. Feed your spirit, man. That's how it grows. Verse 62 says of the same chapter, And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus did not allow himself to be distracted. No matter what took place, he never lost focus. We are distracted people that need to be focused. Somebody say amen. Amen. Oh, can I tell you, and it comes in many different forms. That's right. You remember when Jesus was led by the spirit but tempted of the devil in the wilderness for 40 days. What did he do? He presented him after fasting for 40 days, you hungry. I've done complete 21 day fasting, but not 40. And the enemy, Satan, came. And what did he do? He told me, he said, said he knew he was hungry. He said, command this stone that it be made bread. The lust of the eyes. You remember then he took him up to a high mountain and showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world. He said, I'll I give you all this. It was his kingdom until Jesus Christ died and went into the midst of the earth and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and said, no, 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 it don't belong to you. We handed it over to him in the garden through Adam and Eve. But when he came up and rose on the third day, he said, but I'll give you all this. Are you listening to me? The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and then the pride of life. You remember, listen to me. He set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And said, cast yourself down. See, and he even quoted scripture to him. Isn't it amazing that we ourselves even try to justify things in our life? Can I tell you, listen to me. When I, when, when, when I studied the life of Jesus, and I began, began to realize that one of the most misattributes he has, which was being focused, has been overlooked. See, we should never, what does that passage of Scripture say to me? And it should say it to all of us. We should never, listen, get so caught up with anything or anyone that we lose ourselves 
or we lose our relationship with God. He deserves our attention. I've done it with all five of my children when, I, when I'm talking to them. You know, listen to me. You'll look at me. Look at me when I'm talking to you. My children, my, my oldest children, when they were little, and, I, and I, I, I would be doing this or doing that, and they would be trying to talk to me, and they, they say, Dad, you hear me? And I said, yeah. And, and my, especially my oldest boy, Donald, he would say, Dad, look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> he wanted my undivided attention. Don't you just love it when you, you're talking to somebody, you know, and, they, and they're distracted with this, they're distracted with that? In 2007, Steve Jobs walked down onto a platform and held a device much similar to this right here. With technology that's so in advance that it would change our world, and it has. We are able to reach more people around the world with this device than any other time in history. Think about that. I believe, listen to me, I believe with all my heart that God has given us this technology, these devices, the, the devices these tools, especially in this held hand, Device to publish, listen to me, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we have to be watchful. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, be watchful. We have to be watchful that we don't allow it to become a weapon of mass destruction. Listen to these statistics. Are you ready? According to a new research by Global Tech Care, Assyrian, Americans check their phones 96 times a day on an average. That's over 35,040 times a year. Surveys, and this is not just from one, say that a teenager will spend six to nine hours in front of some kind of screen, whether it be a five-inch screen or whether it be a 65-inch screen. 54% of population, listen, check their phones within five minutes of waking up. Listen to me, listen to this. That's 3,285 hours a year. That's over, listen to me, 136 days a year that's gone from our life. We don't have a time problem. We still have the same 24 hours that we've always had. We have a focus problem. Somebody say amen. Did you know that in 2019, 26% of vehicle accidents are caused by phone usage? Now I'm going to say something that's a little sobering. You could be the cause of someone losing their life if you don't take this message seriously. How many missed opportunities have we missed with our families, with our friends? Because we are distracted. We as a church, as a body of Christ, need to adjust our focus. I want to ask you this question and only you can answer it honestly. Who or what will be the authority in your life? Are you listening to me? If the devil can distract you, he can destroy you. You remember Samson. He was distracted by a woman's beauty. You hear me, men and women. His strength was not in his curly locks of his hair. His obedience was, he listened to me, his strength was in obeying the instructions that he received. 
but it lost focus. And I heard this in the spirit when I was preparing this message. And I began to weep. And I said, God, forgive me and forgive the church. She pressed him and pressed him and pressed him. Till he told her what it was that would cause him to be strengthless. Like other men, see. That's what the devil really wants. He wants us like everybody else. Remember who you are in Christ Jesus. We are to be different. We're not going to be liked by everybody. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you also. Listen, if they reject him, they're going to reject you. We're not here on this earth to win a popularity uh, contest. We're here to be light in a world full of darkness. We're here to be salt to give Savior. To pres- that salt is a preservative, you know. And this is what I heard. They're almost asleep. They're almost asleep. See, they waited till Samson went to sleep. I hope you hear what the Spirit is saying. That's why the Scripture says, Awaken. Remember when Jesus was in the garden? Get sent me. And he prayed until there was his sweat was as if it were great drops of blood. The emotional and physical agony that he was going through. And he came upon the disciples. You remember the story. When he rose from prayer and he came to them. He found them sleeping, remember. The Bible said sleeping for sorrow. Sorrow, listen to me. It means to be heavy. It means to be grieved. Sorrow means pain. Don't get so Focus on your pain, on your wounds, on your heaviness, on your sadness, that it bears the promises of God so beneath your bitterness that you can't see it anymore. You know what Jesus said to him? He said, Why sleep you? Why are you asleep? He said, rise and pray. Why? You know how you overcome temptation? The Bible says you resist. You know how you resist? You know there's got to be a force, a power behind resisting. It's not by might. No matter how strong you are physically. No matter what kind of degree you have. No matter how smart you are intellectually. It's not by mind, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. He said, pray lest you fall into temptation. I want to challenge you. There's all kind of fastings. But I I challenge you to fast from this. Turn off the TV. And when you pull up to the table, have a real conversation with your family. Don't be like the picture, little cartoon picture, where the woman said, you know, can can you you just strap that thing to my forehead? You know what children are lacking today? 
attention. Focus. Man, I wish I had time. Distractions come in many forms. Proverbs 24, or 4, Proverbs 4, look at this, and I'm going to close with this. We'll just pick this up at another time. I believe God has gotten the message across. Look at verse 25. Let the eyes what? Look right on. And let the eyelids look straight before thee. Go to verse 26. Ponder thy path. You know what ponder means? To stay balanced. Look what he says. Ponder thy path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Go to verse 27. Turn not to it to the right hand nor to the left, remove thy foot from evil. Can I tell you these devices are not evil? They're neutral. It's what you do with it. Money, I hear, I've heard people all my life say money's evil. No, it isn't. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Money is neutral. It depends on whose hands it is. If you put it in Pastor Ken Jackson's hands, it'll be used for the kingdom of God. You put it in a drug dealer's hand, and it'll be used to destroy people across this world. Are you listening to me? We need to adjust our focus. Listen to what the good... The good news Bible says, it says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Now look at the God's Word translation. Verse 25 says, let your eyes look straight ahead. And your sight be focused in front of you. The most d- dangerous distraction in this world is that which distracts us from God. Are you with me? All I'm saying is to you, let's get back to basics. Let's return to our first love. Let's all repent together because we've all been distracted by some form or another, whether it's through technology, whether it's through golfing, whether it's through fishing, whether it's through hunting. I know marriages that have been destroyed because of them. Whether it's through through what somebody has said or somebody has done to wound you, it's all set up And remember, we just read, don't get sidetracked. That's all it is. Stand to your feet with me this morning.